by the emissions of their tailpipes. And I don't know how many of you know, but uh, uh, recent studies actually show that uh, the health hazard of cars in cities um, kill more people from heart and lung diseases than actually the bumpers do in car accidents. And so imagine if somebody came up and said we can stop all the car accidents in Israel. Um, how big of a, of a thought that would be ends up that if we stop the emissions, we'll, we'll save twice as many people um, in Israel. We actually know that in Israel, more than any place in the world, we run an experiment in Israel uh, called Yom Kippur, um, in which we can actually measure the reduction in emissions on an annualized basis. Every year we measure it and the, and the numbers are staggering. Now, transport in cities has always been a, a fascinating um, uh, problem to solve. I don't know how many of you know, but um, the average speed in London in 1800 of a horse and carriage was met again in the year 2000 mm -hmm. by cars. So basically, uh, transportation, no matter how much you try, if you actually improve a city and it becomes vibrant, um, it always gets congested um, as a result of growth in the city. Cities that function well sprawl, and as a result of that, they get more people who come from the suburbs to drive into the, into the city. And the biggest issue we have today is not urban driving, it's actually suburban driving that gets into, uh, into the main city, and you can't stop that. Suburban drive um, has always been a, a, a main issue. We see it in, uh, in taxis, we see it in, uh, in commuters, and a big part of the solution is actually uh, not to stop driving, but to stop the, the damages of driving. Um, when we're looking at, at, um, at these issues, what, one of the things that we see is mayors actually have a, um, a list of problems that they have to solve. The first thing they have to provide their, um, their citizens is uh, survival, clean air. Um, and uh, if you kill your people, it's not a good way to increase taxes long term. And so um, <laughs> we, we actually are solving uh, primary problems in cities. We add to that um, the, the change that happens mostly on the outside arteries that come into the city. And if you look at most cities, uh, the sort of the central urban sprawl, uh, the, the downtown area is always vibrant. It's the young kids, it's the 20 sums that come in. They don't want a car, they actually don't care about a car. And we see it in the biggest metropolitans, Tokyo, for example, less and less people own a car, don't even know how to operate a car. Same in New York, most people don't actually own a car. Uh, the problem starts on the outside, and as you get to the outside of the city, the outer rings of cities become uh, decaying. And the main reason is those are the areas where the main arteries from the suburbs come through into the cities. And what you see are these six, seven, eight lane um, roads that emit noise and pollution in deadly uh, amounts in which people just don't want to live next to them. Now imagine these uh, arteries go with cars but without any emissions. And what happens is a very interesting, uh, a significant shift in the value of the housing in that area, a significant shift in the value of the land, a reurbanization re in those areas, and as a result of that, a significant increase in taxation. And you can, you can see, imagine Jerusalem where the main arteries actually become um, desirable, not, um, not ones that you want to move out. The taxation effect on, uh, on the city is, is fairly, uh, fairly significant. Uh, now all that can actually happen. We're, we're doing that, and we're seeing it happening in, in various cities. Uh, the partnership that we have with France um, is, is an interesting one. Uh, there's a reason why France is leading in, uh, in electric transport. The main reason is they have an overabundance of electricity. They went to the nuclear uh, generation of electrons. They have overabundance of electricity and they want to push um, electrons as the means for transport, which is the exact same reason why New York moved away from electric cars back in the early uh, 1900. In 19 uh, 01, 02, if you measure the number of cars in the streets in New York, there was an equal amount for gasoline and for electric. But at that time, it was the invention of electricity. New York was the center of that. Edison put the, the network in there, and they, they ran out of electrons. But oil became cheap and abundant because nobody used it to uh, light up their houses, and so oil became the preferred mode for transport. It's the abundance of energy that pushes people to use that for commute, and I think if Jerusalem today uh, moved into uh, with the announcement we're making today about uh, Jerusalem becoming uh, our main pilot in Israel. I think that would uh, would demonstrate to the rest of the world how you could start something here close to God and then take it out to the, the rest of the world. Thank you very much.